Amen. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get after me. We got it up here. You'll see it. Oh, announcements first. Vicki, go ahead and do your announcements. Well, guess what? I don't have anything to announce today. <laughs> okay, well, good. All right, that's good. All right. All right, ready? These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except my worship. Oh, Lord. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Yeah. 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 I mean, how I many know how good it feels, how good it feels to lay your words down? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, bro.
back to him. God's good? All the time. God is good. Yes. Even with the COVID, God is still good. Amen. God is awesome. Somebody come on and say that. God is awesome. Give Lord a hand to have a praise. Come on. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Thank you now. Hold on. Praise Him. Glory to His name. God is awesome. Amen. That's right. Ready? How many saw the light? Amen. Amen. Hey, 
I got a praise report. Let it rip, brother. I like praise reports. My daughter and son-in-law are over the COVID and have been released to be out in the public. Awesome. All right. That's awesome. That is so, so awesome. But, but it's probably Alan, right? Yeah. Letting Alan out in the public still might not be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy in there named Alan Boyd I have never seen before, and he had his back turned to me and he said, you know this guy is Alan Boyd, and I was looking for Alan to turn around and go, come on now. There's another Alan Boyd. It seems there's a bunch of Alan Boyds around here. Amen. Amen. God good to you? Oh, everybody, look, and since, since uh, there is no prayer request, I'm going to ask the guys to come here and anoint me. God is so good. Yes. Moses' 
minister saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Wow, y'all say dead. dead. There's another word for this too. Say things are not working like I expected. Say it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Moses, my servant, is dead. I was expecting to follow him all the way into the promised land. Now we have to enter the promised land, and now you know Moses. Okay, so things didn't work out like I expected. Now therefore arise, go unto this Jordan, that thou and all these people, into the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Somebody look at somebody said there's still work to do. Still work to do. COVID didn't win. Say that. COVID didn't win. All right. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, this river Euphrates, all the land of the high tides, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall be not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people I shall divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give them. And be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest Observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong, and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Stretch forth your hands this way. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I know, God, that you are alive and well, and I know, God, that all things are in your hands. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and to anoint in the way that only you can, Lord. I ask you, God, to minister to each and every one of us in a very powerful way today, God. Let us know that you're here with us and that nothing is impossible for you, God. Nothing. Help us keep our eye on the prize, our eye on the goal. We know, God, that you've got it, and we give it to you in the name of Jesus we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 You can be seated on the way down say, the past is behind us. 2020 is behind us. The future is ahead of us, 2021. And God is with us, and nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Okay, I, I, went, I, I was doing some studying yesterday, and, and while I was studying, I have to admit, uh, I was watching cartoons. And I thought about 2020. In 2021. Let me ask you a question. If any of y'all ever feel like this, look. <laughs> In heaven's name, what am I doing? <laughs> Has anybody ever felt like that? Every day. <laughs> Every day, especially now with, <laughs> with COVID. Okay. So so again, now, I'm going to get back serious again, but I just had to bring in a little bit of humor because some of y'all are looking like, like, like uh, 2020. It's still on you. <laughs> and 2021 is bearing down so hard you're having a hard time thinking. So here we go. Ready? Look, watch this now. 2020. Now, now, now again, have you ever just felt like, like the coyote? You're, you're, poking, you're poking it. You're waiting for it to fall on down on you. Can't, everything you do, everything you're doing, you feel like you're poking something that's going to gonna crash on you at any moment. Well, there's 2020. And we're going into 2021. Well, well, worse to describe 2021. And again, I know you might get tired of hearing it, but if you turn on the TV for five minutes, five minutes, just five, you're going to hear every word I'm getting ready to say. Every day, every time, five minutes, you're going to watch, you're going to hear these words, okay? So, so again, uh, anger, misunderstanding, protest, riots, loss. You hear it all the time. You might not hear those exact words, but you're going to see it uh, uh, impl uh, implemented in, or in implied, excuse me. you see it implied, and you'll see all these things going on. But the number one word for 2021 now, since we've come from 2020 into 2021, so, you know, uh, I've heard people say, well, I'm glad 2020 is over. Now we can start fresh. Well, again, I'm not trying to burst your bubble, but 2020 was a down payment. 
and in 2021 we're getting ready to start paying. Okay? So, so don't think that it's going to get a whole lot better. We're safe in God. We've got a hope in God. I'm not trying to make you feel like God's let go. But the world has gone crazy. Absolutely stir crazy. And if we're not careful, the Bible says in these last days the very elect will be deceived. I mean, we've got to watch our own P's and Q's because we can get caught up in this mess. And if you get caught up in this mess, you can no longer be a positive influence. We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be a city on a hill that cannot be hid. We're supposed to be salt and light. And so the Bible says, but well, salt's no good, but be thrown out underfoot, trampled on, if it's lost its effectiveness. And so we don't want to lose our effectiveness. Do you want to lose your effectiveness? We can't stop what's happening in 2021, but we can be effective in how we minister to people in 2021. And so, as I was looking at this and, and thinking about how we see things, I began to, uh, again, the Lord started speaking to me about Joshua chapter 1 again. And I know that's one of my favorite go-to chapters, but again, I saw 2021, uh, 2020, all this stuff behind us, and now 2021 uh, looking kind of like it's not going to be getting any better because we keep on having all these crazy things happen along the way. So, so we need a clear word for our crisis generation. This is a crisis generation. Agree? This is a crisis crisis generation. So, let me just tell you this. I said it last week. I'm going to say it again. It is no accident that you were born there. i got to stop and let you think about it. It's not an accident that you were born there. God didn't say, okay, I, oops, I didn't realize that David was going to be born at this time. I've got nothing for him to do. Or he's got to take care of himself because I had no idea he was going to be born at this time. He's just the luck of the draw. No, God knows you very intimately. He knew you in your mother's womb. He knit you together in your mother's womb. And as he was knitting you together in your mother's womb, he knitted what you needed for 2021. Wow. Wow. We're, we're not a hopeless cause. We're not useless. God's got something for us. Amen? So now, watch this. I want to see something. you got to know this. God has a plan. Again, He has not abandoned us. He's not left us to our own. He has not forgotten the church. But He's also got a purpose. And that purpose is for everybody in this church. We've all got a purpose. We've all got a chance to shine our light. We've all got a chance to be that city on the hill. We've all got that chance to be the salt of the world. And God has given us power to carry out our part, our purpose in His plan. Everybody's got a purpose in His plan. Now, now in order for you to feel this power, in order for you to understand your, your, your purpose in His plan then it's all got to do, number one, with your perspective. Your perspective, how you see things. You know, uh, again, I, I, I was doing some marriage counseling just a few weeks ago, and 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 I was telling the couple, you know, uh, uh, the man had said something to the wife, and the wife had just got it all misconstrued, and I said, I think you're not listening. You, you're, you're hearing one thing, but he's not saying what you're hearing, I don't think. And she said, well, can you describe it? I said, okay, what if, and you've heard me say this before, I said, what if your husband told you that when he saw you, you're, you were so beautiful, your beauty, when he saw your beauty, time just stood still. And she went, oh, oh, that'd be awesome. I said, but what if he said the same thing in a different way? What if he said, honey, you got looks that would stop at 8 and 8 o'clock? He said the same thing, but just a different way. I said, so you got to understand, he may be saying something that you're not ready to hear, or you're not listening, you're not prepared to hear what he's got to say. The same way, right now, there's so many people so shocked, but still, they're still being stung by 2020. They're still being hurt by 2020. They're still trying to recover from 2020, that they don't see it as a down payment, and that 2021, they're hoping it's going to get better, but I'm here to tell you, it's not going to get better, but God's purpose is going to get better. It may not get better, but God's power is going to get stronger. When it's all over with, when the, when the chairs, when the music stops, we're going to have a chair, amen? I mean, God's got us. We're, we're in His hand. No man can snatch us out of His hand. So now, let's just look 
and their perspective. I'm going to try to go ahead and get all through all this today, so y'all y'all bear with me, okay? Now, let me just talk about for a minute uh, 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 crisis. Now, this, this actually initially was a John F. Kennedy quote, but here is When written in Chinese, the word crisis, now he was in the, in, the, in the Cuban crisis, and he had some other crises along with the Soviet Union and stuff. And, and John F. Kennedy was a very wise man when he said this. He said, uh, crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger, and the other represents opportunity. So in other words, you know, uh, a crisis can be determined as a turning point of a situation. Now we can look at it as the church dying, or we can look at the church as it's reuniting. Amen? We can look at it as the church is losing its, its flame, or we can look at it as God is fanning the flame. The choice is yours. And I can tell you today, you can leave here and think God is putting out the flame, and you will live a very defeated week. But if you live out, leave out of here tonight and know that God is fanning the flame, you will leave out of here and have a very effective week. The choice is yours. It's not the world's. It's not even God's because God wants us to flourish. But what it is, it's up to you how you see things. So, so a crisis is determined as a turning point in the situation, an outcome that could be better or worse. Better or worse. It, it is a time of instability and uncertainty with a possible impending outcome that can be unfavorable and undesirable. So remember, crisis or, or is dangerous opportunity. A dangerous opportunity. All right? So now, watch this. And again, I can't say this enough. I cannot say this enough. You are not an accident. No matter what anybody's told you, I cannot say it enough. There's no accidents in this church. Everybody in here today, God has called you for such a time as this. God had not just put you out here and said, do the best you can. God's got a purpose. God has an anointing. God has power for you. And you have been created for such a time as this. Look, look, look. Look, get, tell me, look, look, look. Say this out loud with me. We are armed and dangerous. Say it. Come on, say it again. We are armed and dangerous. Y'all almost made me believe it. We are armed. We are armed and dangerous. We prosper in 2021. I may not be physically, I can't even explain, but I can tell you this. The Lord keeps telling me, tell everybody that I'm still in control. I got it together. I had to let go. I know what I'm doing. Trust me, you were born for such a time as this. Amen. So we are. We're all armed and we are dangerous. So, so what's this? Here we go. Again. Go ahead and move there, brother. There we are. Okay. So now, in this time of crisis, this dangerous opportunity, and knowing that we were raised up for such a time as this, the way we view 2021 will determine if we thrive or survive. Okay? I, I can't change the circumstances, but I can change the way I see them. I, I can't change what may come at me but I can change how I handle it. I can't always uh, adapt my feelings, but I can adapt how my actions will be toward those feelings. Because sometimes your feelings are hurt. Sometimes your feelings get crushed. But it's up to you if you let those feelings drive you crazy or you let those feelings drive you to be unproductive. So, so, so how we see it determines if we thrive or survive, if we go forward or backwards. If we are a victim, or Victor. So now, so now just, just quickly, I, I want to talk about Joshua for just a minute. Joshua was also part of a crisis generation. God spoke to him, get ready, not to pamper him, but to challenge him. He's down. He's really out. Moses is dead. He was thinking Moses was going to take him all the way in. He had no idea that he was going to be the one bringing him in. He's down on his knees. He's really having a hard time. And God says, poor, poor fellow. Let me see if I can't do something. Rock you, old little fella. No, he said, get up. Get up. Quit laying here wallowing. Get up. I got for you to do. And God is challenging this generation and this church. Don't just lay down and go, well, it looks like you're in the end. We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. No. Some of us have that we're ants and, they got, and Satan's got a great big magnifying glass. He's waiting to burn us up. I'm here to tell you, we win. We win. We win. We 
so, 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 likewise, God is speaking to us not to pamper us, but to challenge us. For us to move forward, to face the challenge and take the ground. So now, now again, I, hopefully it's not going to take much longer. If it does, well, then it's a big challenge. Ready? All right. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, and bow all these people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Wait a minute. You're sending me into a land of giants, into a hostile environment, into a place that does not like us. And you're telling us to take the land. Oh, does that kind of sound familiar today? Into a hostile environment? Into a place where they really don't want to hear about Jesus? Are you talking about anybody else? Don't talk about Jesus. Why? Because Jesus convicts. Because Jesus convicts us of our lifestyle, and Jesus tries, Jesus points us in a better way, and a lot of people don't want to go in a better way. They're enjoying it. Too much. You're crashing the party. You're crashing the parade. Plus, there's others that just have gotten so burnt out from all that's happening that they just don't want to try anymore. So, so you see, watch this. Now. Not tomorrow. Now. Watch this. Y'all want a word for today? I'm going to give you a word for today. You can put this, write this down. This is your word for today. By the way, I've got outlines out there in the back from last week about uh, the virus of anger. And it's all the PowerPoint slides. There's like five pages. So, so, and they're stapled together. So if you wanted one of those, grab one on the way out. Because uh, I had several people ask me about them. They're back there. You can grab one on your way out. If we run out of that limited supply, let me know. And we'll make another limited supply. All right? So here's your word for today. Ready? Ready? Y'all ready for a good word? You remember something to make you want to get up and crack your battery, come and crack your car? Ready? Ready? Well, look. You 
can't spin on the potter's wheel without being out of control. Woo! Some of you right now go, I don't understand. I, I can't even keep my focus. I feel like I'm going round and round and round. And you don't understand that God's going, quit, quit moving. I'm trying to mold something beautiful out of you. And say, well, Satan is trying to confuse me. That's all part of my plan. Because what he meant for bad, I'm going to use for good. And I'm going to put you on that wheel, and I'm going to turn you and turn you and turn you until I make a beautiful vessel out of you. If some of y'all are tired of spinning, maybe you ought to be still. Okay, Lord, go ahead. There you go. All right. A little here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so watch this now. Get ready. I'm, I, I said I'm almost through. Didn't say I was. There shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. And we will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. The first view we got to have is a view of thanksgiving. You know, it's kind of hard to thank God when we have all these deaths from COVID. It's kind of hard to be thankful when things don't seem to be going right in the cities or even in the country. It doesn't, it's kind of hard to be thankful when things aren't necessarily going your way or when people have lost jobs or lost all these opportunities. But you know what? The greatest show of faith in a person's life is thanksgiving. If you can thank God for no matter how, what it is you have in front of you, you can thank Him. Wow. So watch this. Again, behind me, I can thank God for past promises kept. You see, that's what he said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Now, when he said that, now Joshua can look backwards. Matter of fact, if some of y'all can look past 2020 and go even further and think about God's faithfulness. Joshua was there when God sent Moses back to deliver them and he said, told Pharaoh, let my people go. He was there and he saw the ten plagues. He was there. He saw when the firstborn of the Egyptians died at the Passover, but God's children lived. He was there at the Red Sea when they marched across and people were saying, how are we going to do now, Moses? What are we going to do now? we got our back against the wall. We're up against this Red Sea. we got mountains on each side and a big army behind us. What are we going to do now, big boy? You let us out here. What are we going to do now? He said, hold on. He looks up and God says, God, what am I going to do? It? Read it. God says, why are you talking to me? I told you what to do. You put that rod forth and watch what I'm getting ready to do. When he held his rod forth, the Bible said that the Red Sea parted. And they walked over on dry land. Wow. He says, so as I was with Moses, he was with Moses when the water was bitter at Marah. And how he threw in the tree, which represents Calvary. And how God sweetened the water so they could drink it. <clears throat> Joshua saw all this stuff in the past and he said, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Let's take it back a little bit. Shall we? As I was with Billy and Dorothy Bonner, so am I going to be with you. As I was with Burton and May Gray, so shall I be with you. As I was with Sister Kathleen, so shall I be with you. I saw them go through some bad stuff, but I saw God every time step up to the plate for them. It gave me so much faith to watch these people the way they did. And I'm going back further and further and think of people. And I say, as God was with them, that same God with them is the same God with us. Amen. 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 So, so I see this. Get ready. <laughs> Get ready. Promises kept does not mean there's no challenges. It does not mean there's no battles. It does not mean there's no losses. What it does mean is that through it all, God is there. He's there with you to strengthen you, to anoint you, to lift you up, to empower you, to do what you have to do. So now, a, a view of a Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, I like this. I love this. Though the righteous fall seven times, they shall rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Let me tell you something. I may have gotten knocked down a few times, but you know what the cool thing is? I got back up. Amen. I've watched some of y'all. Y'all go through some rough things, but you know what? Well, thank you, sister. I see the cavalry coming. <laughs> thank, 
Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah. Let me get some of this. Every, I've had allergies for the last couple of weeks. This is not COVID. This is allergies. <laughs> you clear your throat in the Dollar General and all of a sudden you got to die all by yourself. <laughs> ah, there you go. It's good stuff. <laughs> uh, so here we go. For the just man falls seven times but rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So again, here we go. I'm getting ready. I'm getting close to the end now. Here's the next view. There's the view of Thanksgiving. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. This is God's message to the church today. Whatever you're going through. Whatever's happened, this message is specifically for you. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, and even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the high tides, and to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Now, <clears throat> the next view is the view of expectation. What, what are you expecting? I promise you, if you're expecting nothing, you're going to get a double dose. I can tell you this too, if you're expecting trouble, guess what? You're going to get trouble. But if you're expecting God to do something for you, something's going to happen. And it's going to amaze you. So you got to look. The problem this day and time with all the stuff that's happening is that many people are suffering from having their expector broke. They got shifted to the negative and now everything's negative. The shifter's stuck in negative. And I or their expector shifter stuck in negative. So, so watch this. Ready? Behind us, Thanksgiving. Ahead of us, the future promise is coming. Be expecting. Watch this. Now, this is something the Lord showed me, and it just amazed me when I saw this the other day. It just, I just love it. The future promises for everybody in here. Not just me. Everybody in here, the future promises are unlimited. Let me just stop for a minute, let that sink in. The future promises are unlimited by God. He said, every place that you step your foot, I have given unto you. Why do you think Satan wants you to stop? Because he knows wherever you go, God's with you. Wherever you go, God's there. Wherever you go, God's making a way where there is no way. Wherever you move, when you're moving forward, God is <clears throat> moving with you. So the future promises of God for you. Somebody say, he's talking about me. Now look at somebody say, he's talking about you too. The future promises of God are unlimited. <clears throat> you think God is waiting to get a, get a, get a vaccine? You think God was going, I had no idea. Look over at Jesus, I had no idea COVID was coming. Now, if you look in the book of Revelation, it talks about plagues and plagues taking out a lot of the earth. Hey, he knew this stuff was coming. So, 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 they're unlimited by God, but get ready. Y'all ready? I hope you brought your steel toes. <clears throat> the future promises are limited by man. Same thing. Every place you put on your foot, I've given unto you. Every place your foot shall tread. We limit God by being afraid to move forward. But you got to understand, 2020 was rough. I was there. I preached like six funerals in seven weeks, and, and half the funerals I preached were for COVID people. I was there. Still there, just like y'all. There's not a, you know, there's not a little bubble for pastors. I'm in my little bubble. I got secret service taking care of me. We all got secret service taking care of us called God's Angels, Psalm 91. But I don't have a little bubble that I go through and nothing's hitting me. Believe me, I got people in my family that got sick. It hit all of us. But you don't have to let it stop you. When you 
you let it stop you, when you stop moving forward in God, guess what happens? You limit the promises of God. You limit it. Not God. I can't say that enough. You limit it, not God. We start saying, God, I, I, thought, I thought this was going to be better. I thought this was going to be I thought, I thought, I thought. God says, every place that you step your foot, I've given it to you. But you won't go forward. Wow. So now, that view of expectation. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. And not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29 11. And of course, my favorite version of this is in the view of expectation. Jeremiah 29 11, the message version. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you and not abandon you. Plans to give you the future, the hope that you hope for. Wow. Watch this. When all the doors are shut and you have nowhere to go in your situation, listen carefully. Because this is where we're at with a lot of things from 2020 and bringing in 2021. When all the doors are shut and you have nowhere to go, that is when you go within. Every crisis is an opportunity, and you are the beginning of an opportunity. Wow. Wow. When everything's shut down, all this stuff's going on, all these people are losing their jobs, all this stuff's happening around us. And you're going, I don't know if it can get any worse. And you find out it's a challenge because more things are getting worse. Things happen you never expected to happen. You get, you get, uh, you step into stuff you weren't ever expected to step into. That's when you go within. And when I say go within, that's when you go to God and say, God, it's yours. Crisis. Again, John F. Kennedy, Cuban Missile Crisis. All the stuff that was going down. Crisis equals a dangerous opportunity. I'm not going to say until 2021 is going to be all pop tarts and frosted franks. Okay? We're not in the jiffy pop popcorn. Moving ahead is dangerous. Okay? Stepping forward is dangerous. Stepping up and letting God use you is a dangerous opportunity. It is not all peaches and cream. It's always been hard, but now it's even harder as we see the last days approaching. Next week, still not sure if we're going to go back into the seven churches or just uh, maybe jump in some stuff about the rapture. I, I'm not sure yet. I'm waiting on God to give me a call. You know, show me something. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Watch this. When you're standing there, when the doors are shut, and you have nowhere to go, that's when you go inside and watch this. When I'm inside, I remember all the past promises kept by God. Thanksgiving. Present, I'm standing on the promises, boldness. Future promises coming, I have a great expectation. I want everybody to stand. BJ, come play something, brother. so easy to get confused about what's going on. It's so easy to have your spirit dampened. The spiritual wind taken out of your sails. 
The thing that God is nowhere to be found. That is so far from the truth. Sometimes it's because we're on the wheel and we're spinning. Things are out of control. And we think God has let go of us, but the truth be known, when things are, think about this, when things are out of control, when you're spinning and you're on that wheel, you've never been any closer to God because His hands are upon you. Wow. God's hands are upon you and He's shaping you. You feel like God's nowhere to be found. You can't even hear Him. All you can know is there's, there, there, there's chunks in your life being chuck out. There's things that in your life that, that have, been, have reshaped itself. There's things in your life that have changed and, and, and you're thinking, God, where are you? Thinking, I'm so confused and I'm so dizzy with all this stuff. And God says, hold on, you're on the wheel. My hands are on you. I'm making a great work out of your mess. Wow. None of that. What he told Joshua was get up, go forward, in every place you step your foot, lies opportunity. That's what he's saying. Every place you find yourself, every situation you find yourself in, there's an opportunity. The problem is, it's a dangerous opportunity. You think when they went into the promised land that God just, I mean, Joshua just said, y'all move out the way, everybody's moving out the way. Of course, here, you never have had it, Joshua. And they fought him tooth and tongue. It was a battle, a strong battle. Every step of the way, battle. You say you can't feel it. You're dizzy, you're out of control. If you can get back to that view of thanksgiving and know that right now the moment God's got you on that wheel of his hands are on you you can start thanking him you'll start feeling him and if you'll look forward with the expectation not looking for the worst but the best and know that every place you step in every situation there's opportunity Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask some hard questions right now, some hard ones. But I believe if you'll answer it, nobody looking, you'll be on your path to get your win back. Number one, is there anybody here that would say, my relationship with God is not in the best place it's ever been? I'm really needing a better relationship with God. But if I look around, could you slide that hand up and say, pray for me, Pastor. I, I, I really need to get in a better place. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Maybe you're here right now and your boldness has been zapped. You really don't know where we're going and how we're going to do it and, and it's got you. Got you bad. And you don't know how we're going to move forward. God didn't tell Joshua every plan ahead of time. He just said, you put your foot forward and I'll be there with you. You put your foot forward and I'll give you opportunity. We got to keep moving forward, not backwards. Now, look by looking around here, we hit bow. How many be honest right now and say, Pastor, I, I really want to do this, but I've really been sad. I've had the wind knocked out of my seal. Pray for me, but you put his hands up. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We're getting ready to pray, but I'm a, before we pray, remember. That's exactly what Joshua was at. The wind not got in the sail, no hope for the future. And God, instead of pampering, God challenged him. It showed him 